of you. I'm joined now by one of the candidates in this race who has definitely got a lot of interest in the absentee ballot, votes being counted correctly, uh, as well as ranked choice voting. It's Catherine Garcia. Uh, Ms. Garcia, thank you uh, for your time. First of all, uh, right now, it, it, the vote totals that come out today, if they put out revised vote totals, are you going to feel what kind of confidence level are you going to have that those totals are correct? Oh, they'll be correct for what they are, but they will not include the absentee ballots. And that is over 13 percent of the vote that's been cast that we are aware of. Uh, and that could have real impact on the final rankings of this election. Look, I, I, I follow this race very closely. Your campaign, I think more than any other, uh, may do very well among the absentee ballot voters. So I guess my question is, it's your understanding, is it even fair to count, to start doing the ranked choice before every absentee ballot that's going to be counted is accounted for? You know, I would have preferred that we waited until the entire vote was in. Uh, but, you know, this will give us some indicators of where it's going, but it certainly will be not the final statement. And I knew that we were all going to have to have patience through this process. Uh, not easy for right. people in New York City, but really important in this case. What kind of access and transparency do the, do the, does the Board of Elections give you, your campaigns, all of you collectively? Do you have a representative in the counting room? Have they been briefing you on what they're doing here? Or are you as in the dark as the rest of us? So we have had people at precincts where the counting has been going on, and particularly with the absentee vote uh, and making sure that all voters uh, have their vote counted. Uh, but we were not aware of the test data and what was going on with the test data. And what was their explanation for messing up this test data? I mean, are, do you feel like you're getting um, the runaround or do you feel like you're, you're getting um, that, that maybe these folks at the Board of Elections are starting to eat some humble pie? Oh, no, they, they were relatively transparent that they just made a mistake. Uh, and that they had left this test data in there before they put the real data in and ran the numbers. Uh, you know, ranked choice voting isn't that complicated to do once you have all the data. Uh, but certainly if you have information in that's not correct, then it's going to be problematic. Uh, but it sounds like it was just human error. And it reminds me of, you know, my fifth grade teacher. Please double check your work. Well, you are if I feel like you are trying to be optimistic here that they're going to do this correctly. But, you know, the history of the Board of Elections um, there. It seems as if they don't they won't acknowledge errors all the time. Uh, Bill de Blasio offered them 20 million dollars to handle this new system. They refuse the money. Why is reforming the Board of Elections in New York City such a difficult task? You know, it is the system we have had for a long time, but. There is legislation that is being carried by Senator Kruger and Assemblywoman Rosick at the state level that I think would go a long way uh, to professionalizing the Board of Elections and making it so that we really had folks accountable to all of us about getting it right the first time. Uh, but I am confident that at the end of the day, we will see every vote counted and we are monitoring it closely. Look, I, I, I feel like you may benefit from this ranked choice voting system. Others may not. Um, are you does this at all shake your confidence in the idea of ranked choice voting? Is this something do you think the idea is good and the execution was bad? Or do you think this is going to uh, create credibility problems for the system in general? Uh, the, the challenges we had yesterday was not related to ranked choice voting. That was a human error. Uh, but ranked choice voting does allow you to really be able to have a positive campaign and to talk about issues and rather than trying to tear mm -hmm. down your opponent. And so I was very pleased to have ranked choice voting be part of this because it's the campaign I wanted to run was one where I got to talk about the uh, things that were impacting New Yorkers because we've got a lot of work to do. Look, Eric Adams, one of the one of the other top vote getters. I mean, a lot of us have, have assumed this was going to come down to perhaps yourself and, and Mr. Adams. Um, he's, you know, obviously uh, 
was not happy with how the Board of Elections handled this. Whichever one of you becomes mayor, um, if it is one of you two, or, you know, let's not assume anything with Maya Wiley either, um, are you, do you feel like you have a little extra work to do to restore confidence in New York City's democracy? Uh, you know, I am hopeful that I will be the Democratic nominee, but uh, I certainly would not count out Maya Wiley or Eric Adams in this. It's going to be a close election. Right. And then we need to come together to make it so that we are putting what's in the city's interest first. And I will certainly support whoever is the Democratic nominee. All right. Catherine Garcia, uh, who is uh, waiting. I guess you got to wait days, maybe even weeks to find out who won this nomination. I appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective with us. Thank you so much for having me.